Okay, here's an HP DV8000. Had some iced tea spilled into the keyboard. So what we're going to do is replace the keyboard, which I always like to do if something spills on the keyboard and, and one of the keys isn't working, the keyboard's not working in the least, I just replace the whole keyboard. And then I always, always, always check the motherboard to see if any of the liquid got onto the motherboard. So we're going to take the whole computer apart. I just took the hard drive cover off there. The battery's out. And now we're just going to inspect to see if we see any signs of water damage. And under that hard drive, you can see the white, that's from liquid, that's from water. So the water, or the iced tea, actually got down through the computer to the bottom of the hard drive. So it made it through the system. So I don't even turn the computer on until I check if the motherboard's okay. If there's any liquid that's spilled in the computer, I never turn it on. I pull the battery out immediately. I don't hook up the AC adapter. I don't even test it. I just take it apart and inspect the motherboard as first priority. I'm looking at the hard drive there, just checking if the hard, any corrosion is on the hard drive circuit board itself. And I tell the customer too, I, I say, look, I don't recommend turning this on. It may or may not work, but if you want to save the computer, let me take it apart, inspect the motherboard, make sure the motherboard's clean, there's no liquid still in there, and then we'll turn it on. So they understand that. And they, they're willing to pay for the diagnostic, even if, even if the computer's fried, at least I'm giving it my best shot. So these, these hard drives are in here, and they're in a little docking bay, so you just got to find the right angle to pull them out. While I'm working on that, I just want to say it is important when somebody brings in a computer that has liquid spilled in it and they say, I, just, I spilled liquid in this, um, no matter if they say if it works or it doesn't work, don't even try powering it on. Tell them you need to take it apart first, make sure everything's dry, and then turn it on. Because you don't want to be the one responsible for frying the motherboard if there's still liquid in there. And right now I'm just taking the RAM cover off and pulling out the RAM. And we got the wireless card down in there too, so we're going to pull that out. We want to get to the motherboard. We want to inspect the motherboard for any white spots, corrosion. That looks like all the components. Most of the components are coming out. There's the CD drive. Okay, now we're going to un start unscrewing screws from the bottom cover. Some of the screws have indicators on them, some don't. So you just have to use your own little plan on how to remember where each screw goes back. A lot of times the screws that hold on the bottom cover are the same size, but different computers have different screw sizes. So. And you can see on this computer, there's some indicators. Those numbers next to each hole tells you what size screw goes in each hole. It's usually measured in millimeters when they do that. On Toshiba, it's like F5, will stay for 5 millimeters, I believe. And this one, it just says the number and says millimeters. It looks like that's all the screws. Let's flip it over now. And we're going to attack this from the top now. That hinge cover should come off, and that is how you get the keyboard off. On most systems. Let's see what happens on this system. It 
See if there's any screws in the back holding it in from the back. Nope. So we're going to take a screwdriver, try to pry off that hinge cover plate. See if it comes off. Do not force it. And it does come off. So that's a help to us. Now we have some screws exposed that will take the screen off and hopefully get the keyboard off for us. And I'm just looking at the exact way to get the keyboard off. It might come off as an entire plate. And that took me a while to figure it out. That was a tough one. <laughs> but finally, I found out how to get the keyboard off. And you have to take a couple more screws off from the bottom here. This is a bigger model. I believe it's a 17 inch. So it's got a little bit of a different design. It's the DD1000. And you can see the keyboard's loose now. So I think we're just going to poke it up from the bottom. All the screws are out. Just got to find the right spot. Just feeling along the edges in the bottom, see if there's any place to poke the keyboard up. We're getting the top case off. And it turns out the keyboard just kind of falls out when you do that. So there was a way to get that keyboard off. I don't know exactly what it was, but just checking to see if I scratched anything, which I didn't. And now the keyboard just comes off. So now we know it comes off as that whole plate, and it's screwed in in several spots on the bottom there. You can see the little post sticking up. Now we know for next time. I keep all these, I guess you could call them bloopers in here because this is real life. This is how I do it. So it's not going to be perfect every time. So don't feel bad if you don't get the job done perfect every time on the first time. And then we just remove those two ribbon cables. That keyboard also has the power buttons and LEDs on it too. So there's two ribbon cables for that. And we're going to detach the ribbon cable for the touchpad now. Anytime, anytime we're able to get to these cables, when you know you have to take the top and bottom cover off, just unhook them because you don't want them attached when you, when you start to pry the computer apart because they might rip and they're a pain. You don't want to have to reorder them. So we detach the touchpad cable there. Just make sure it's out of the way. And now I'm inspecting the motherboard. I'm trying to see if there, I could see any corrosion. We may not have to take the whole thing apart, but we're going to have to make that call. Now here's the keyboard. I'm going to show you real quick how we order the keyboard right in the middle of the video here. If you see where it says Compact PN, that's Compact Model Number, to PK13ZK3100. So I'm just going to type that exact model number in eBay and see what comes up. And we got 26 items. Like I said, I like to buy from the country that I'm in, so let's see what we got here. We're going to sort them by lowest price first. Since we have about 20 items, we have some selection. We could uh, see if we get a good deal. This one at the top, 12 months warranty, ships from the USA, high e-tech, it's got tons of uh, feedback, 99.3 positive feedback, so he seems like a trusted seller. He's from Brooklyn, New York. We're going to hit the buy it now, and that's the keyboard we're going to buy for this thing. Now we're going to install that a little later. But this keyboard is going to be definitely be replaced. It's very tough when the keyboard gets something spilled in it. It's very tough to bring those keys back to life because the liquid seeps in between the layers of that keyboard, and it's like they're not meant to be taken apart, the, the different layers like that. So. Well, it looks like we're going to have to take the whole computer apart here to get a real good look at the motherboard. Otherwise, just wouldn't feel right about um, put, just put, slapping a new keyboard in, knowing that liquid leaked down into the hard, where the hard drive bay was. So right now, I'm just pulling the wireless antenna through the, the uh, bottom of the case to the top, and I'm going to detach the LCD cable. These are the two wires that are coming out of the screen. So after we do that, now we're able to pull the screen off. And then once the screen comes off, we can get to the top and bottom case and get the motherboard out of there. 
or at least get a good look at the motherboard. You'd be surprised when something spills in these things, the tiniest crevices the liquid could get into and cause a problem. I would not believe where the motherboard looks perfectly fine, but there's this one unexposed area, and once you expose that, you see that the liquid actually leaked into there. Okay, so I just fast-forwarded getting that screen off. There was these one, two, three, four screws on each side. Just wanted to show you there real quick. I must have had a problem, so I had to edit that out of the tape. And now we're just going to take screws out of the top part of the case that are holding the top part of the case to the bottom case. And some of the screws are in there pretty tight. Just look for any screw that could be holding the two parts of the case together. Sometimes you'll unscrew a screw that isn't actually isn't holding the case together, but that's okay because it's better to have more screws out than to have them in and then you have to break something to get the cases apart. And it looks like all the screws, just want to make sure. Once you're sure and all the ribbon cables are detached, you can start trying to pull the cases apart. Just find a corner that looks like it would be the loosest or easiest one to get off and then kind of go around the edge once you got to start. I like to take my, my fingernail, if I can, and take it right along the edge there and just try to pop it up nice and gently as you go along the outside perimeter of the laptop. And remember, if it feels like you have to force something, there's probably a screw or something holding it in. There we go. That wasn't too bad. Now we got a nice, good look at the motherboard. Now there's that black panel there. I'm not quite sure what that is. That might be speakers or something of the sort. Also, if you see the, the black sticky tape on top of the motherboard, it's also a good idea to look under parts of that, too, for corrosion when you're trying to determine whether liquid got onto a motherboard and did some damage. Water seeps into the craziest of places. Yeah, and those black, that black thing I'm trying to take off there, that's the speakers. Going to hit it with some compressed air. Any place you see some dust or dirt, clean it up while you have the chance here. Speakers tend to get a lot of stuff in them because they're exposed to the outside through, you know, the speaker grate. So things fall in through the, the holes for the speaker and land in the speaker. And once you determine that there's no corrosion on the top side of the motherboard there, you can start putting everything back together. And I always like to dust things before I put them back together just because I, now I have an opportunity to do it, which I probably will not have in the future. So make sure everything's fastened down properly and start putting it back together. Now, what I was doing as I was bending that black piece back, you know, a couple minutes ago, is I was looking at the underside of the motherboard as well. 
it turns out I didn't really have to take the whole motherboard out. I was able to see under the motherboard and I inspected it that way. And there didn't appear to be any corrosion on the underside, so I think we're okay. Now again, this is just a precaution. The, the customer only said that some keys weren't working, but whenever they tell me they spilled something into the machine, this is what I like to do. It's better to be safe and better to make sure the motherboard's clean. This way the computer actually lasts. It might only run for a month if there still is liquid down there. Okay, you got to make sure everything goes back flush the way it was. If it appears that something's not going in properly, inspect it and see what's causing that problem. Okay, it looks like we got it handled there. So we're going to start screwing the screws back in the machine. Now I'm going to speed up this recording so, again, not to bore you guys. The screws go in in the same configuration. We took them out. So it's pretty self-explanatory. Attach the touchpad ribbon cable there. Let's get the rest of the screws back in. Get the screen back on. The LCD cable. Now it's time to get the screws in on the bottom. Now we're going to feed that wireless antenna back through the hole. Now reattach the keyboard, mount the keyboard, snap it in, make sure that's screwed in properly. Attach any screws that we missed. Now we're going to install the hard drives. cover back on, screw that on, make sure everything is flush. Install the RAM, install the wireless card, screw it down and attach the antenna. Put that hinge cover plate back on. Put the battery back in. Now we're back to normal speed. I'm going to attach the AC adapter. Power this on. See what happens. Now I actually want to try it with the battery out just to make sure it's getting the pure AC power and it's not the battery that's powering the machine. And it's lighting up, it's powering on, everything looks okay. So we still have to get that keyboard, waiting for that keyboard to come in. We did order it, but in the meantime, if you want to use this machine and some of the keys aren't working, you can use an external keyboard through USB. This is a $10 USB external keyboard I got at Micro Center, real small mini one. Very cheaply built, but very handy. 
Now, just be aware when you do USB keyboards that sometimes the drivers have to be loaded before they work. In this case, it worked right away, so we're okay with that. But now, you know, I consider this computer done except for the keyboard replacement. We're, we're confident there's no corrosion on the motherboard. Nothing is fried. Nothing's going to go bad. Everything looks clean, so it's good that we did that test. And that's going to be it for this video. Thanks again. Thank you.